Now, um, Michael Monti Videnius will talk about MariaDB and I think how it is the status in Debian and stuff. Okay, yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. So, welcome to my uh, talk about Mar MariaDB, my square, a little bit about the history where we stand and what we plan to do. But first, I want to say that I'm a developer, I'm mostly. Uh, at home, sitting in my cellar and doing code. I do these talks just because I have a hard time saying no when people ask me to do that. And I, also, of course, want to ensure that everyone knows everything about uh, MariaDB. In the good old, good old times, we had uh, David Axmark doing all the talks, and I was sitting home doing the development. But uh, that said, I'm most comfortable in a discussion with people. So if you have any question at any time or want me to spend more time, more time or less time on, on something, just tell me. We will let's start to introducing Maria, who is giving the name to the Maria Ribi. This is my youngest daughter. She turned nine a couple of weeks ago. And of course, I wasn't at home. I was at Oscon. That's kind of the life of where, where you are. Somebody do lots of, lots of talks. And uh, this is following the tradition that we had my oldest daughter, me, giving the name of MySQL. A little bit of what I'm going to talk about. If not, somebody wants me to talk about something else, which I can do, of course. And uh, the history is basically that I created MySQL, uh, started with the coding in 1981. We released it as uh, open source, like in 95, GPL as 2000. And um, then it was eventually sold to Sun, and I thought that would be a good place for MySQL, because Sun did understand development and open source. But when Oracle bought uh, Sun with MySQL, uh, I saw it as one of my tasks to ensure that all this time I had spent on this project wouldn't just get wasted. And we had lots of core developers who didn't want to work at Oracle. They said that they will quit and go to other uh, companies or their projects, so I, I took them under my wings and created a company where all people was own, or the core developer was owner of the company, and we had as a task to keep MySQL together under the name of uh, MariaDB. Because the only way an open source project dies is if you lose the, lose the core developers. So fortunately, we are in, the, I know in the SkySQL, we are uh, 16 uh, developers, all, all the core developers except a few is part of uh, uh, the MariaDB team. And our goal is to keep the talent together and also to ensure that MySQL will always exist under another name if necessary. And we are working with the community very actively to ensure that we get much more people working on MariaDB. So who is using MySQL here? Okay, so then you know a little bit about the history. Anybody using MariaDB? Okay, good. That's, uh, and that's kind of nice to, for me to see. When I started this four years ago, uh, we, we had thought that we could, could get a lot of people starting to use MariaDB within one or two years because we had the core people, we didn't know what we were doing, and we were doing it the right way. Basically, it took until January this year until we started to see mainstream adoption of MariaDB. But uh, then you know that we are open source, uh, binary compatible. We are aim to always be that. And uh, the main reason is that there's still lots of MySQL users, around 50 million MySQL installations. We want to make it trivially for anybody to go from MySQL to MariaDB. And currently it's like that. We have an extremely few persons have any problems. So there were about seven my, uh, MariaDB users here. Have you had any problem converting to, from MySQL to MariaDB? Not anything, which basically is what uh, I get everywhere. Basically, nobody has a problem. And that's also why Red Hat was quite confident when they are now switching all the users from MySQL to MariaDB. Of course, maybe one in a thousand will have some issues, but the good news is that the other 999 will have a better ex, uh, experience. So what 
But to do that, we need to make it trivial. We need to have the same data on disk, on the wire, same file name, sockets, ports, because otherwise you can't just deinstall MySQL, install MariaDB, and it should work. And that actually has to be the biggest problem for me to get MariaDB into Debian, because you don't usually do that in Debian, do something that is a full replacement. Open Office was one, but in this case, you just switch to LibreOffice. And, uh, and that had become to be the political struggle I had for four years to try to get MariaDB into Debian. More about that later. Uh, what we are doing that is totally different from Oracle is that Oracle is trying to say that uh, you can be part of our development team, you can please give us patches. The problem is that Oracle doesn't work with the open source community. You, they don't publish trees, they don't tell about the roadmap, they don't even tell when a dr code drop will be done or not. So it's incredibly hard to do that. We, in the beginning, we tried to give patches to Oracle, but actually it was so hard for us to do that. And actually it's cost us more work by doing that. So we have stopped doing that. We, have, we only do that for serious security patches that we find, because we don't not want anybody to break in even into my SQL system, because that could reflect bad upon us. So we are a true fork, not just a patch set. Uh, we are not depending on MySQL for uh, development. We do merges every month just to ensure that we get all the new features and the bug fixes. But actually, we have to go through all the code and review it and uh, fix a lot of things. Because even if Oracle has some good developers left, they put a lot of new uh, people on it. They have about uh, 20 people working on MySQL. And, but the people don't know the code, they don't have anybody to ask because they have no of the core people left, so the code quality is deteriorating rapidly. Uh, there are some teams that are doing a really good job. That's in the DB team and uh, uh, the NDB team, and then you have some other team who are doing a decent job, like the performance schema. But the main code, that's deteriorating really, really badly. And uh, that's why we need to review everything that we take in. So we had about 30 man years in front of MySQL. We are GPL only because uh, we kind of like the GPL and we also have it to because we are based on MySQL. So there's no risk for any closed source extensions or anything. And that's actually how I wanted MySQL to be in the beginning. So when uh, I took investors in 2000, we made a shareholders agreement who said that the investors are not allowed to change the license it has to, on the server. It has to be GPL. And we were able to do, keep that promise until we were sold to Sun. But after that, when the project is sold and the company is sold, you kind of lose the hold on that. But we try to keep it as long as possible. So during the uh, five years or four years we have been working with MariaDB, we have done five releases. So we try to do a release once a year. And we, try, and we probably will do two releases of 10.0 with quite rapidly about half a year in between. We also working with the Galera team to do a true multi-master. And there's lots of users who are really interested in that because they see that as a holy grail to solve the problem that uh, if you have one master that is not fast enough, you can just add up to eight, 10 masters and things work quite nicely. Uh, in, in certain setup, and you just get the scalability that you expect in a cloud envi environment. So, uh, um, these are the, are the basic things we added in the releases. So, 5.1 was basically MySQL 5.1, plus we did an open source build environment, because that didn't exist. In, in MySQL, and that was actually my fault because we did a build environment that was supposed to be open source within MySQL AB and Sun. We just never released it just because the maintainer of that wouldn't have time to handle a community. And we thought that there's no, there's, we are doing the builds, so why should we do that? And that was just wrong. We kind of didn't expect the future that happened. So we should have released that even if we couldn't maintain it uh, publicly. So we actually had had to build a totally new build infrastructure based on BuildBot, 
and uh, we have done everything with, with that open source. So if somebody wants to make a clone of MariaDB and put up your own build system, you can do that easily in one day now. It took us uh, six months to get that done, done. And we also did a much better test suite. So, and then with MariaDB 5.2, we worked with the community and took all the important patches that we could find that uh, made sense to put into MariaDB. And uh, we added those. So MariaDB 5.2 is a true community release. With 5.3, we had the optimizer team. So the whole optimizer team, everybody who has worked on the optimizer MySQL moved to MariaDB, and they continue the work that has been done in MySQL 6.0 and do an even better uh, optimizer. I know we had in, have in 5.3, have something that can compete with uh, any other commercial databases and even uh, uh, handle things that Postgres was previously said to be superior. So we are quite happy with that one. And uh, the, the, the sub optimizer we have in 5.3, that is a little bit similar to the one that is in MySQL 5.6. Difference is that in MySQL 5.6, they took the code from 6.0 backported that, fixed a couple of small bugs, and released that. Uh, in in 6.0, the optimizer team has ha had already worked three years in MySQL AB and Sun to do a good optimizer, and then they took that and worked uh, four persons for three years to do an even better optimizer, and that's what we have in MariaDB. And that's why Ma uh, MariaDB, in most cases, for advanced queries is superior to anything that MySQL have, and probably will, will ever have. We also have much better uh, replication, we have more features. And then MariaDB 5.5 was just uh, merged between 5.3 and 5.5. So we didn't add much in 5.5, uh, except a more efficient thread pool, because in 5.5 Oracle started to uh, do uh, or change MySQL to be an open core product. And uh, we have taken as a task to ensure that anything that o o Oracle does closed source, we will have as open source. So one of the most important things that they made, made closed source, they actually made it closed source because we already have that in MySQL 5.1, was a thread pool. And, we had, uh, and they did some improvements and closed it down in five, MySQL 5, 5 Enterprise. So we added that in MariaDB, something that is as good or better as, as Oracle has. We also added uh, Sphinx and some interesting queries for um, large sites like uh, limit, Limits Row Examined. And that's actually really good also for uh, ensuring that nobody can get um, access to your da uh, database and trying to do queries. So with, with li Limit Rows Examined, if you add that to a query, you can ensure that uh, the optimizer will never examine or, or return too many rows. So if you have a big database with, with, um, with security information like credit cards or stuff, by adding li limit rows examined 1,000, you can be sure that nobody can access the whole table or do a join and try to query everything that you have. So with, uh, we are now working with MariaDB 10.0. We will have 10.04 hopefully out uh, next week, and 10.05 should be the, our first beta. So in this case, we have backported those features in 5.6 that are uh, of good code, code quality, like InnoDB and Performance Schema. Uh, we also um, got o online out a table to work. So these are basically the the most important features that you had, have, had in 5.6. The problem was that the replication code in MySQL 5.6 is really horrible bad. It said something that uh, uh, our team who had looked at it said that they want to ha don't want to have that because it's wrongly designed, it has too many limitations, and uh, they don't think that we can ever get it to work and, or maintain it. So we decided that let's re-implement all the things that MySQL has done in replication. And uh, there are also some other things that we just think are wrongly done. So we added global transaction ID in replication in a much better way than MySQL has. It's also compatible with the multi-source extensions we have done. 
uh, we are working on parallel applications. So basically, 10.0 is, uh, I think, next, next week when we do 10.04. Basically, it's ready. The one thing that people have wanted for years, I said that the biggest limitation in MySQL is to ensure that the slave is as fast as the master. MySQL has in 5.6 done some things for parallel slave, basically that if you have different databases, those can be run in parallel. The problem that in practice for most size, sites, that's such a big limitations that it doesn't help them at all. We will have in uh, 10.0, uh, 5, a full, fully uh, parallel application that is basically guarantees that uh, uh, the slave is as fast as the master for any query. So if you do uh, lots of things on the master in parallel, the slave will also be able to do that in parallel. And we already have uh, um, a demo version working in uh, Bazaar for that. So we, we believe that we should be able to be, get done, that done by end of next month. So we have lots, also lots of new features. Uh, show explain is something that is really nice that it, if you have a query that takes a long time, you can do explain on a running query and you can see actually what did optimize do with it. So you can see that should you actually kill it or not. Multisource means that you can have lots of uh, masters with different data, then you can add one slave and you can do parallel replication from all the masters to the slave. Um, we have uh, something in alter tables we have done even faster. Delete returning is something that is quite useful that you use, that is an, I think it's an Oracle extension that you can see the, the rows that you are deleting. So basically the delete plus select. Uh, we have speed up group commit even more. I will come to that. We added Cassandra as a storage engine and level DB. I think actually level DB is done also now. So we can actually combine no SQL and no SQL with the MariaDB. We added Connect, which I have a slide for, Re really interesting uh, storage engine, and we are working on adding TokyoDB. We'll have to talk about that too. And more statistics that you can see actually for each thread how much memory it's using. Actually, this one should work now. Yeah. So uh, these slides are just to show that what is actually the work we have done on the optimize and, and why do I am able to claim that MariaDB is sometimes better than MySQL. So uh, this was the work that we added in 5.3 and 5.5. MySQL 5.5, even that was, uh, the Oracle worked a long time on that. They never added any of the complex stuff. So they never did any optimi optimization for the optimizer. In MySQL 5.6, they have taken the code that was in 6.0, added that to 5.6, and uh, you can see basically which one are done. So they only had one optimization that they added that we didn't have, and we added that to 10.0. So these are not that important. It just means that most complex queries that should be able to be execu able to execute faster can be executed faster. And so the one couple of things that we don't have yet explain for delete, update, and explain in JSON format. How many is using JSON here? Okay, so still I don't know if that's a good idea or not. We will, we will do that because we want to be compatible. We just haven't seen it as something really critical. We also care about uh, all users and people you're still using my ISAM for different reasons, just because it takes less disks. So we sp speed up that some 250% already in uh, 5.2. This was actually a community patch. We added optimizations that you can add uh, more memory and you can get three, seven, or 10 times speed up just by adding memory for queries. This works for queries where you're gonna retrieve the same row multiple times when doing a join. This was uh, the one slide where, when I'm showing this one, we usually get people to switch to MariaDB instantly. And so because of a bug or design issue in, in a DB, uh, MySQL, even if you, you, it, it works quite good 
and uh, it will multiple threads normally. As soon as you add replication, it basically stops scaling, as you can see here. Uh, and this was something that was a big problem for Facebook, so they created a patch for that uh, to solve some of that, and then they asked our team, can we do it better? And the blue curve is uh, how MariaDB 5.5 scales. So this is basically MariaDB 5.5, MySQL 5.5. So, so by just replacing your MySQL 5.5 master with MariaDB, without doing any changes, you basically get a four or five times speed up. Okay, now this is. And this is a blog by uh, Mark Allen from Facebook. So it's not from us. As soon as this blog was published, uh, the replication team in MySQL said that we will also add um, a group commit. And they pu published a way how they would do it. And uh, what we thought was that the design that they are proposing will never work. So in 5.6, when they added group commit, we actually noticed that they had copied our code. Slightly different. As, but, uh, so this is how MySQL performs nowadays with 5.6. And this is MariaDB 10.0, uh, where we have improved the group commit even more. And we will in 10.1, in we will improve it one step more. The, 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 the problem with uh, replication is that, um, um, so the setup we are working on is that we have SkySQL, uh, who is doing frontline support to customers, and the MariaDB team, no, wor no working, no days working in. SkySQL, we are handling all the hard issues. We see a lot of people having problems with MySQL replication. And even if we can fix most things in MySQL and MariaDB, we can't fix the replication problems that comes up basically weekly because it's design issues. Basically, have to recode the replication. So we have just have to tell them to switch to MariaDB. So this kind of uh, curve is the idle curve. But replication is just so bad, so people will get stalled things, they lose records, and then all the slave dies. And we have looked at the code and just see that it's so full of bugs that we don't want to maintain that. So the, I talked about the thread pool. That's something that uh, Oracle decided to do, closed source. And the reason why you need a thread pool is that MySQL works uh, with one thread per connection which works quite nice, and when I designed that in uh, uh, 93, I thought that's something that should work quite good, but then you had uh, CPUs that basically was one core, and uh, for that, the old system worked quite good. So with uh, many cores, you had a problem that if you run uh, basically 512 threads, you get your CPU uh, going down with almost 30%, uh, and then it goes even down further. And the reason that the more threads you add, because all these threads are running in the same memory, and uh, you can only handle that many threads at the same time, all your uh, speed is going to thread switching. And um, the solution to that is uh, instead of uh, having one thread per connection, you have a pool of threads. You basically say that uh, let's have 64 thread handle all queries. That means that you have much less thread switching, and then you get much better uh, scaling. And this is the reason that Oracle did this closed source, because the uh, really advanced uh, websites with lots of users, they kind of need that kind of scaling. But with MariaDB, you get that for free. And uh, the tricky thing with the pool of threads, if you only have 64 threads running at the same time, assuming you get 64 queries that takes one hour each, in that case, your survey is stalled, can't do anything. So this pool of threads only works when you have really fast queries that only take a couple of microseconds or a second. So what we have a unique in MariaDB, you can run with both versions at the same time. So and uh, when you conf configure MariaDB, you get two uh, ports. One is for thread per connection, one is for pool of threads. So as long as you direct all your fast running queries to pull threads, then you, then you can handle sites much bigger than you can do MySQL than in MySQL today. So, 
Let me take, need, need to take a little bit of water. Any questions so far? Anybody speaking English? Mä oon kyllä puhua suomeakin, jos auttaa. Mä oon ollut, että yleensä sillä on paljon pienempi. So Finnish doesn't have been Okay. So basically the new SQL movement started with a blog from Twitter by a guy who hated um, SQL and wanted to prove that you can do much better with some of the new SQL engines out there that were Cassandra. And um, the problem was that with the blog post back then was that you could have doing ex the exact schema he used for Cassandra, he could use that in MySQL and get exactly the same speed up. But anyway, um, but the ma main reason for using the SQL that uh, it's nice to be, ha be able to handle unstructured data where you have different amount of columns per row. Because uh, even if SQL is quite very still, uh, very still language, it can't easily, you can't easily do a web store in um, SQL where you want to have store attributes for every item you have because a computer has different attributes that, than a t-shirt that has small, uh, large, uh, the sizes, the colors, and so on. And also, uh, people were unhappy with the replication with MySQL because they were comparing most of the, the issues with NoSQL with MySQL. And as you saw there, they were comparing with this curve that basically said the MySQL replication doesn't scale. So we fixed the replication and it scales uh, comparable to many of the new SQL solutions. With Galera, you get something very similar, but the unstructured data is still a problem. But um, uh, we want to ensure that uh, MariaDB would be, become a bridge between SQL and NoSQL. And to do that, um, we had done a lot of uh, things. We added handler socket, which basically gives uh, uh, direct access to NoDB and makes uh, MariaDB as fast as memcache for doing uh, quick reads. We added uh, Cassandra, uh, we are working on level DB, and we also added dynamic columns, which is a very simple way so you can have, in practice, uh, different uh, columns for every row. With, uh, you only having to learn, I think, six different functions. And we're using this as a building block for adding NoSQL. Now we're also working on MongoDB, to add MongoDB as a storage engine for MariaDB. And what the storage engines mean is that you can select, you can update, uh, you can do most things as you, as you can do natively with uh, Cassandra, for example, but you can use SQL. And you can also join Cassandra level DB, and with the Connect engine, you can even jo do joins with Oracle if you like to use these legacy databases. So we have got a lot of questions. So why did we do MariaDB 10 zero instead of uh, MariaDB 5.6? The problem is that because so we are feeling uncomfortable with so, a so big part of the MySQL code that we don't want to take it. We had to rewrite it. So doing the whole MySQL 5.6 and adding that to MariaDB 5.6 would take us one to two years. We didn't want to wait two years to do a release. So then we had two, uh, three choices, calling it MariaDB 5.5, MariaDB 5.6, or something else. And we, calling it uh, MariaDB 5.5, when we already have m much more features, and most of the features in 5.6 will be wrong. Calling it 5.6 and not being a 100% drop-in replacement for, for, for 5.6 would also be wrong. So we just do choose 10.0 to make things easy. So the, the plan is that we will do the merge of, uh, my, between MySQL and uh, MariaDB in two steps. 10.0 will have most of the features, and 10.1 uh, released hopefully in February, March next year, we'll have, uh, we'll have everything. But we will do 10.0 in such a way that uh, all the data on disk and on the wire is still the same. Maybe some uh, options will not do anything but there will be options that have uh, no, no other effect than maybe speed. 
So in, in practice, you should still be able to move from MariaDB from MySQL 5.6 to 10 zero for most cases without noticing anything. That's at least the goal where we're going. With 10.1, we can guarantee that. 10 zero, we can guarantee that for most, but not for all. So with uh, uh, MariaDB, we are doing open development. We are working with lots of the community. And this is a big shift from, uh, from MySQL lately and going back to the beginning of MySQL. When I started with the MySQL project in 95, I was working actively with the community and showed that all the, everything they wanted was added to the MySQL if it was possible. And we, we had people helping us with some patches like porting uh, MySQL to Windows. But uh, in 2001, we had uh, 15 uh, uh, employed in, in MySQL AB. That was when we took investment, of which 14 was developers. And then I went to Morten Mikos, who was the CEO, and said that I can't do the community part anymore. We need somebody, we need a community team. And Morten, Morten answer was said that that's not why we got money from the investors, we will do that later. In the meantime, time, everybody can work with the community on their free time. Um, and in the, in the, but the effect was that between 2001 and 2005, we had nobody working with the, with the community. So uh, we still helped people doing connectors, but the server, all development basically, except few bug uh, fixes was done within MySQL AB. Community helped us with doing, uh, getting Ruby to work, uh, PHP, Perl, everything else. But, but it, uh, it was kind of a monolithic uh, structure, and this was never the intention. So with MariaDB, we have go back uh, to working actively with the community, ensuring that any patches that people have come in, that also why, why I created them, or were part of creating the MariaDB Foundation, to ensure that we have a way to ensure that everybody can get reviews. And we also encourage people to sponsor development within the company, employ a developer who's working full-time on MariaDB in other companies than just in, in SkySQL. And now we have seen a couple of companies standing up and saying that we will do that. And we are working with them to employ people. Google already employed publicly one working full-time on MariaDB, but they have a team of 10 engineers who is working around MariaDB. So we will see much more patches from Google in the near future. And uh, we have, uh, from our site, we have hundreds of thousands of downloads of MariaDB, probably one million users, but uh, things are changing uh, rapidly. I will come to that. So this little bit about database usage, according to a survey for the four fine group, that uh, overall MySQL has about 80% of all databases. It's actually 12 minutes. On my watch, it's 10. <laughs> this is when we started. I can argue for, I, I, I can argue for two minutes, then I lose. <laughs> but basically, MySQL has 80%, uh, then uh, SQL Server, Postgres, Oracle, MongoDB, MariaDB, DB2, Cassandra, Redis. This just shows also that uh, they did two surveys, one in 2009, this is how much people use MySQL, and how they predicted the usage would, would be. 2012, they did a second survey, and, and this is the MariaDB uses. MySQL use actually has, has gone up, and the predicted use is, is slowing down but a little bit, but on the other hand, at the same time it's slowing down, they expect that the database uses to go up four or five times. So if uh, we still are at 2017, 65% uh, uh, running MySQL and MariaDB, we still are the dominant database. And my job is to ensure that this is completely green. And, and uh, we are kind of getting there. So I said that um, in January things started to change. Uh, the, the, the first news that causes people to notice MariaDB globally was when Wikipedia announced that they moved into MariaDB. They moved the English server and it went so good so they are now moving all the servers. I think they maybe have moved all of them already. And then uh, Mozilla blog that they're moving to MariaDB 
Fedora voted 7 0 that they will replace MySQL with MariaDB. OpenSUSE has, has included MariaDB a long time, know it's default, Slackware, basically everything except DB and Ubuntu, more or less, which is the reason why I'm here. And also in April, Google said that the, the new SQL offering is based on MariaDB. Fusion IO is heavily pushing MariaDB. They're working us with improving uh, MariaDB on Fusion IO. But they are doing it in such a way that all the extensions will be soon available also for other memory cards. So that's nice. And Red Hat is including MariaDB in Red Hat Enterprise. I think also that OpenSUSE Enterprise will include MariaDB. I as far as, as I heard, but I haven't seen our official statement about that. Basic, this shows that uh, basically people expect that no SQL, everybody's talking about it, how much market share, how much money there will be. Uh, but according to the 451, the search group, the MySQL mar mar market share will continue to be much bigger than no SQL, at least for the coming few years. Uh, we have had lots of people coming to us and saying that um, in the beginning that uh, they have a problem with Oracle because the license um, prices has risen dramatically than Oracle acquired Sun. And uh, in practice, MySQL is no more expensive than Oracle if you want a license from Oracle, at least for the OEM market. And uh, one of the uh, problems has been that uh, the libraries has been GPL and uh, Oracle's no even uh, going to um, companies are only doing monitors, monitoring services. They're not distributing MySQL, but they're using the client library, and they are trying to get them to pay for it. So we created the LGPL client library based on MySQL 3.3.3. It's uh, compatible with the current one, and we, anybody can use it, uh, using this. We also are working on, a, we did a Java, and we should have a ODBC LGPL client library ready within one month, I think. And this has been also sponsored by the foundation. Uh, anybody using TokyoDB? No? So TokyoDB is just a very interesting engine. That, uh, this is the only candidate I see that can actually potentially replacing a DB. And uh, we, we will add that to the next version of MariaDB. They decided to become open source two months ago, and we are working with them to get it fully integrated in MariaDB, and just not taking the current code, actually improving it so to use uh, facilities that are only exist in MariaDB to make TokyoDB even better. We also sponsored the Connect Stories engine which is an engine that can read a lot of different formats from disk and use those natively. So MySQL has a, a MariaDB has a CVS storage engine, but it's, that's read only. By using Connect, you can read and update CVS engines. You can also use ODBC to connect to Postgres, Oracle. Or, so we know that people have been really enthusiastic about that, and I've seen a couple of users who are using this to do joints between MySQL and Postgres. And you got six minutes. Six whole minutes. Whoa. Or, or four if you ask that guy. <laughs> Don't trust him. Uh -huh. Should I worry that the light doesn't stay on? No, I shouldn't. Good. OK. So um, thank you. You can't see my slides because they're on here. Um, one of the things that has changed uh, since uh, MariaDB was started is much more of a focus on community. Uh, as we've been changing the structure of how people can contribute to MariaDB, uh, we felt that it was very important to start a, an independent foundation to be the uh, focal point for community activity so that it was no longer under the control of a single company. And so um, at the end of last year, Monty created a, uh, a MariaDB Foundation. And uh, I joined in and started helping him with that this spring. Uh, since then, we have um, established a, a, a board of directors for the foundation. Uh, that includes uh, Jeremy Zawodny from Craigslist, who's also a major MariaDB user that wasn't on Monty's list just now. 
Uh, and we have Sergei uh, Golubchik, who's one of the core developers, uh, on there. And then there's uh, Monty, uh, myself, Andrew Katz, who's a, a lawyer in the UK, who's helping us with governance. And the chair of the board is Rasmus Johansson, who is, uh, the, w w was helping Monty with administering his business and is now working with Sky SQL. Uh, that board is now uh, putting together new governance for uh, the MariaDB Foundation, and we hope that during September we'll be able to publish that governance on the internet, and we'll be hoping there'll be a lot of people with an eye for open source governance coming and telling us what's wrong with it, and uh, giving us a, a, a substantial quantity of pull requests to uh, fix it up and make it into good independent governance. Uh, the, the rough timetable of that is to publish in September for the board to consider the feedback in late October for us to um, have a board vote establishing those new bylaws as our new governance in November, and then to have community board elections to replace these, uh, these current uh, hand-selected board members with community-selected board members. Probably the model that we'll be using will be to have 50-50 uh, board elections, 50% coming from commercial members of the foundation who are providing us with our funding, and 50% coming from the contributors and committers on MariaDB, so that the board is not under the control either of uh, the uh, commit team nor of the commercial contributors, but remains a balance between the two. The reason we're doing that is because the, the foundation uh, employs a small development team. Um, our goal is not to develop all of MariaDB. That's the job of the community of committers. But we do feel there's a need to have a central team who are doing build, sustain, and package. Um, so making sure that the build system works and that there is a working repository, making sure that we are uh, sustaining, so reintegrating the changes that are coming upstream from MySQL, Next slide. Next slide. And um, uh, producing packages. And we're very keen indeed to engage with Debian. Uh, we, we, we do, uh, I've, you may remember that I've uh, engaged with Debian before on trying to get OpenJDK into Debian. And so I, I know what's involved in getting a package. And we're very keen indeed to become the slaves of your MySQL package maintainers so that you uh, become uh, fans of MariaDB as a database package in Debian. And we're also extremely keen to have uh, Sergey become the slave of your security team so that you don't have any security issues and so that you're able to have a transparent and accessible security experience rather than a uh, fait accompli security experience, which I suspect is what you have at the moment. Uh, the foundation is funded by um, the membership fees of commercial sponsors. Uh, we have uh, four or five at the moment and a growing number of commercial sponsors. Uh, so that's why they will appear in the governance, is because you can't take money from people and tell them that they, uh, they don't get a say. However, we don't intend to give them control. We intend to make sure that they have a say but um, uh, our, ultimately, the project is going to be under the control of the committers. And we're going to ensure that by making sure that the committers are actually the only people who have a say over what goes into the code. So this foundation is not going to be able to set the technical direction of MariaDB. It is purely going to be providing the environment in which the te technical activity takes place. Um, our goal is to uh, make sure that MariaDB becomes the, uh, uh, the, the dominant uh, provider of the API that MySQL currently provides. Um, however, we understand it's very important to stay compatible, and so we're going to make, try and make sure that as far as it's possible to do so, as Monty's been saying through here, that uh, MariaDB is compatible with MySQL. Um, I don't, it's not the world's most exciting subject, uh, governance, and that's why Monty got me to do it, because it bores him. Um, and I, I'd be very pleased to discuss this with anyone that is interested in digging into exactly what we're doing. Uh, I'm going to stay until the end of lunch, and I would be very pleased to discuss that. And that was only four minutes, Monty. Actually, five. Ta. But who's counting? <laughs> so, find us sponsors and developers are welcome. So we have two, uh, two other developers, including me, paid by the foundation, and one documentation writer. So this is the conclusions, and I have 30 seconds, so I assume you can read that. And then we have 
20 seconds for questions. So. <coughs> so when uh, Wizzy was released, uh, we had the topic of the release goals, and I asked in Debian Devil what was the future of MySQL and MariaDB in Debian. The maintainer said that they were planning on uh, having both for Jesse. And do you know more about it? What's their intention? So, uh, what, what's what's going to happen in Debian? Do do you know now or not? So I don't. We are talking here with Debian about how to. Go, uh, Continue. I'm not 100% sure that I got your question, but I, if I understand correctly, you will just ask the, how I see how Debian should go forward with using MySQL and MariaDB, more or less. Or did I misunderstand something? That, that's not something some, I, I, I can decide on. I can only influence you. And uh, I, the other uh, distributions, all of them has said that uh, we use MariaDB by default, and if you want, you can install MySQL. Some of those doesn't even allow you to install MySQL, which I think is stupid, because I always like to make the users happy. So uh, how I would like to see it personally would basically have uh, MySQL and MariaDB packet, and then one packet that uh, people can choose which one they should use, like you had in the past for Java, because that would give them maximum flexibility. Uh, when it comes to what's uh, the, the logical thing to do, I think that you should be compatible with the other distributions and not make it hard for people to switch from OpenSUSE to Debian or something like that. Right. So in that case, uh, uh, working with MariaDB will be the best. What we can promise you is that uh, we have people on our side that we will put up, that will answer and solve any issue that comes up in Debian. Or to, put, to, to summarize that, uh, that's exactly the question we came here to ask you. Yeah. And, uh, and we're very willing to put, uh, so we've, we've got some staff in the foundation. I'm very willing to direct those staff to be the slave of your package maintainers and to be the slave of your security team to make sure that MariaDB shows up in Debian either as the only MySQL API provider or as one of two MySQL API providers. And exactly how to do that, I know that the people who should decide are not us, but your MySQL package maintainers. Uh, if you would like a MariaDB package maintainer, uh, you know, that's not the way Debian works. Like, well, you, don't, you don't appoint one. One doesn't show up and say, here, I'm here to help. We're here to be, to be slaves. So um, uh, I'll, tell you who, I'll tell your package maintainers who they are. I know who the package maintainers are. Security team want to help you. But that, your question is the question we want to ask you rather than the question we want you to ask us. Okay. On my watch, we are now already four minutes over time, so I guess <laughs> have to, <laughs> you have to um, do, use the hallway track to yeah. answer more questions. And yeah, thank you for the talk. But I'm here.